Hi, Mr. Corsi here. In this question, we're told there's a cubic function. Ultimately, we're asked to sketch a possible graph of this cubic function. We're given four facts about the function, which we have to collate, get working together to produce a, a reasonable graph for the cubic function. We're asked to do this on the diagram in the answer book. Now, if you turn to that diagram, you find a x and y axis with the, a scale on the x axis. So we're going to have to do rough uh, notes somewhere. Let's do it on a similar diagram uh, just to see what we've, what information we've got here. So cubic um, functions, interestingly, are they can look something like that. They can be going the other way or some sometimes they're like that or they can even be stretched like that. Um, these are the usual examples of cubic functions. So let's uh, see what information we can glean from these pieces of in, uh, these facts, information about the graph. x plus 4 is a factor of the graph. Now, if we know that, let's remember that if we, if we have various things like, for instance, x plus 4 being a factor and we set that equal to 0, then we, in this case, x equals 2 or x equals negative 4. And these usually give us a clue as to where the graph crosses the X axis. And that's true in this case. If x plus 4 is a factor of whatever expression makes up this cubic functions, if we set that equal to 0, in other words, ask where does it cross the x axis, then we get x plus 4 being 0, in which case x equals negative 4 is where it crosses the x axis. So we now know that it could be coming down here or could be coming up here. We're not sure. One of these possibilities is true, but that happens at negative 4. So that's this first fact. We must have it crossing at negative 4, the graph. Let's go on to the second one. x equals 2 is a repeated root of f of x. Now, a repeated root means, for instance, we've got something like x uh, minus 2 times x minus 2. If that was equal to 0, we'd get x equals 2 or x equals 2. Now, the graphs in this case uh, come down and touch the x-axis. That's actually what the graph of x minus 2 times x well, it's actually the graph of x plus 2 times x plus 2. If that was equal to 0, x would be negative 2 or negative 2. That's a repeated root at negative 2. Or we could have x minus 2 times x minus 2, where the repeated root is x equals 2. And uh, that would be the graph. But a repeated root, whether it's an upside-down graph or a regular way up, concave upwards, concave downwards, would come up to the x-axis and touch at that point. Now, in this case, if x equals 2 is the repeated root, then on the graph, either the graph comes down and touches at 2 and goes back up, or it comes up to 2 and touches at that stage. So one or other of these two possibilities is happening at x equals 2. So moving on to this one here, we've got information about the gradient of the graph. F dashed is the gradient. Where is this information happening? It's happening when x is negative 2. And what's it telling us? The gradient when x is negative 2 is 0. The graph is flat uh, along this line somewhere. So it could be either up here, down here, 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 or even on the x-axis. It's flat parallel to the x-axis at that point. Now the last piece of information, again, that involves gradient. 
gradient, not told about x, greater than zero, positive gradient, that's an uphill graph. So the graph is going uphill, where the graph with equation y equals f of x, that's the graph we're trying to draw, crosses the y-axis. So it's crossing the y-axis, and wherever it crosses, it's going uphill. It has a positive gradient. So it, anywhere it crosses, it's going uphill. And over here it was flat. So that's all the pieces of information taken care of. And we know roughly what cubic graphs look like. So how on earth do we get this working out? Okay. This bit, if it's going uphill, and coming up and touching here, that would take care of that. Ah, look, and there's a possibility. It would do that. There's another possibility. It could come up here, go flat, continue up, and then it would have to come down. Now, that is not a cubic graph. There's far too many uh, peaks in it. It doesn't look like the normal cubic graph. This first one I did, where it comes down, crosses at negative 4, zero gradient there. Wherever it crosses the y-axis, it's going uphill, and it comes up and touches the x-axis, and then goes off down again. That would seem a reasonable cubic graph. So let's do that. Let's have the graph touching at 2, going back down. reaching a stationary value there at zero gradient and then crossing at negative four. So that to me looks like a graph that fits all the criteria. So let's just check. x plus 4 is a factor. That means negative 4 is a root. It crosses the x-axis at negative 4. x equals 2 is a repeated root, so it comes up and touches the x-axis. The x-axis is a tangent to the curve at that point. The gradient is negative. The gradient at x equals negative 2 is 0. That's true. The graph is flat, parallel to the x-axis at that point. And finally, the gradient's positive. The graph is going uphill where the graph meets the y-axis. That's going uphill. So there's a possibility for the graph y equals f of x. So that's Mr. Corsi signing out, and thanks for watching this video. Mm -hmm.